Hi everybody, uh, welcome to another one of uh, Dave's top five things that uh, you could be doing better in Zendesk and uh, just as a motivation for why I do these clips, um, I get asked the same question quite a lot um, and I find myself explaining uh, the same uh, core principles of Zendesk over and over again and I feel like Zendesk forms is one of those things uh, that people tend to not make the full use of, uh, get the most value out of. So I'm going to take you through some basic form building, how it looks, how it works. So we're going to look at uh, forms, fields in those forms, conditional for uh, ticket fields using forms and how I can make life easier for both you and the agent. So on the screen in front of me, I have the standard Zendesk ticket. You can ignore all these uh, weird fields you see on the left over here. These are just me playing around and we're going to be using uh, Lemon Electrics, the fake company uh, we created as CX experts to demo this uh, sort of thing. So. Uh, the starting point for Zendesk forms is I like seeing them as being in the middle of what your operation is doing or what, what your agents and what your customers are doing. So in the middle of it, you have your forms. All forms have ticket fields on them. So for example, if I had to go to the Lemon Electrics general query form using the form section in my admin center, you would see that you'd find it over here. And if I click into it, you'll see all the fields that will show to an agent on this form. And we'll chat through how we make those some of those fields visible to customers to fill out on your help center over here in a second. So this is what lives in the center. Then on the one side of the form, we have what agents see, which will be everything, every field that is on a form, they will see. Uh, and we'll chat more about conditions just now. And then we have on the other side, what a customer will see. So a customer will only see fields that are made visible and editable to customers. So uh, enough talk, enough theory, let's actually go and build a form uh, in a real life situation. So I have this Lemon Electrics company, we specialize in uh, electrical devices, I guess. And what we're going to do is we're going to build a form if someone would like to return something. Uh, and obviously, one of the big benefits of the form we're going to create is that we get all the information we need to proceed with the return in a single piece of correspondence. Instead of getting email saying, I want to return something, and then you reply saying, who are you? What do you want to return? What's your order number? Why do you want to return it? Do you want to collect it or do you want to drop it off? Uh, just negating that back and forth that happens so often uh, in, the, in the customer service space. So let's build a form. To the moment you'll see, I have three forms available on Lemon Electrics and we're gonna now build our own one. So we'll start from scratch if we go into our form section in the admin center, uh, you're all well versed enough to know how to access this page. Uh, we're going to add a new form. So at the very top, we see the name of the form. This is the name that's going to show to the agent on the ticket over here. Remember, a form can be changed by an agent, but preferably you'd have it changed by a business rule like a trigger uh, for a specific type of query. So uh, let's go ahead and create our form. So we'll create a new form called returns. Great, and we'll make it editable for end users so that it shows up in our help center over here. Editable for end users, and we can we can choose a different name here. So we can say, I want to, I want to return something. Great. So now we then have the option whether or not we want to apply to all our brands that we're serving in Zendesk. Most of us only have one brand. So in this case, uh, we have multiple brands set up in our instance. So I'm going to select the Lemon Electrics brand, and I'm going to save it. As soon as I save it, what we'll see is that if we go back onto a ticket like this, I'm going to refresh here, is that the forms available are based on the brand selected on the top left of a specific ticket. So if I go into CX Experts, for example, uh, I will not see that form we just created. If I do go into Lemon Electrics, however, uh, for example, then we will see that it is here under returns. Cool. So there we see it over there. If we go and refresh our help center as well, we'll see that the returns form should be, yeah, I want to return something. <clears throat> so you can see there's a difference between the name so that, that we gave the form and the name that we showed to customers. And we may want to have those be the same. You may want them to be different. I don't know. <clears throat> so we're going to this form now. Uh, and at the moment, if we select this form in the help center, it'll be very generic. We can put a CC in a description 
um, and I've chosen to hide the subject line here, which you can also have exposed. But this is not enough information to know about a return. I want to know other things. I want to know why they want to return. I want to know how they want to return. I want to know which product they're returning uh, and information like that, that we need to know how to go to the next step of the query. So at the moment, you can see I only have two fields. Now, all the other fields in your entire Zendesk instance, you can see we've got quite a lot, will show up on the right. So I'm going to go ahead and create some new ticket fields to show us how we can add them and make them either only visible to an agent or visible to an agent as well as a customer on our front facing web form. So uh, I'm going to go to my field section in the admin center and I'm really just going to create a few basic ones. Um, why do you want to return the item? Now, this may be a bit long to be on the ticket, right? So let's call it return reason for the agent. We can put in a description here. We have the ability to make it required to solve a ticket. We're not going to do that here on a, on a field basis. Uh, we're going to instead use that uh, using ticket form conditions, which we'll get into now. Then I have permissions. If the first one is ticked, agents can edit. It'll only show up on a ticket itself on the left over here. Uh, and if we select that customers can edit, we have a few more options available to us. I'm not going to touch on customers and view for now. Title shown to customers. I want that to be different. You'll see that as you put in, uh, as you select customers can edit, we'll see two different previews of how the, uh, the drop down is going to look. Agents will see return reason, and customers will see what uh, what do you want to uh, sorry why why not what why do you want to return the item? And we can put it in a description and say uh, this helps us uh, better. Process your return. I hate when people watch me type because I make mistakes like this. And you'll see uh, a little uh, description we can show to the customers as well. Uh, and we can make it required to submit a request as well. So if they choose this form, they'll be required to fill this in. Let's put in a few drop down values uh, too small, uh, too big, faulty. Um, Quality is bad, no longer needed. Um, and then we can start with that, cool. And we can choose the default value here, I'll make it uh, null to start with. So now uh, we've created the field and we'll need to go back into our form over here. We'll need to refresh it and we'll search for the name that we gave that field in a agent view so we'll search for return reason there it is great so now if we save this form we can go and refresh in two places one is over here and the second one is over here and we should see that pop up as a mandatory field over here so now they can tell us why they are returning the item let's put in a new more uh, a couple more fields so we can see how we can flesh this process out so for example now we can say okay product uh, product name uh, and we'll say cool customers can edit it we'll put in the same name there required to submit a request save uh, and then let's uh, let's go and put that what that one into our form over here great so now we have uh, you'll see it won't show up until we actually refresh that's my mistake Wait and refresh. Uh, product name. Perfect. There you go. We'll save it. Now, if we go and refresh in two places, we'll see it show up on our uh, web form over here. Oh, we haven't actually put it on the form yet, have we? Uh, let me just double check. Product name. Refresh this form not showing up that's okay let's go check lemon electrics we'll see if it's not showing up here returns there's a product name as well as the return reason now we may want to go just double check that this is actually showing uh, that customers can edit it customers can edit We've saved it and we'll duplicate this tab just to force a refresh I want to return something 
I want to return something. Do we just love live demos? Live demos are the greatest, are they not? Right there. Did I put it on the right form? I did. It should be there under product name. Let's go and refresh one more time. And there it has pulled through. So sometimes it just takes a while to update. Here's the product name, and you'll see that if I try and submit now, it will give an error because the description can't be blank. I need to select why I'm returning the item as well as fill in the product name. So that's the basics of a form. Let's do one or two form conditions now with another field. So for example, I want to know more if someone selects faulty. I want them to tell me how it's faulty. What for them to describe the fault a little more. Let's go and create a field. And we'll go back to our field section. We'll add a field and we'll go, okay. <clears throat> We can do a drop down, but in this case, I want to do a multi line. I want them to give me some detail. Explain the fault. Let's go. Fault explanation. Fault explanation. Customers can edit. Uh, to tell us. Tell us more about the faults. Require to submit a request. I'll save this for this field. I will put it on the form once I submit over here. Fault explanation, there it is. And I'll put it under return reason. This is also where you edit the order of the field and I'll save it. And now I don't want the, that field to show all the time. I only want it to show if they select faulty as the reason. So here's where the real power of forms comes into play. We go to the conditions of the form and here we can create various conditions for both agents as well as the end users. So in this case, I will create a condition for the agents that if the return reason is faulty and it shows a false explanation and is required upon solving add i can go and do the same thing for end users which applies to our web form so i'll add this like we can copy but we can also do it manually like this faulty if there's fault explanation i'll make it a required field great so let's save this now if we go back to our form we'll see that, okay, well, it's gonna, let me just duplicate this, okay. In the meantime, we'll go and see that on the Lemon Electrics form on Zendesk, that we should see faulty uh, explanation as soon as we select faulty as a drop down over there. But in this case, uh, I wanna return something. Why do you want to return the item? Faulty, it exposes this and makes it mandatory so that you can report on and understand the customer's query a lot better. It'll be the same from an agent perspective, Lemon Electrics. Uh, we'll go to the returns form. You won't see the field now because I haven't selected faulty. As soon as I select faulty, it will show on the left. So that is a basic understanding of how forms work in Zendesk and how powerful they are. So in the last 15 minutes, I've managed to build a returns form fairly quickly and fairly easily. The possibilities within forms are absolutely limitless. You can have as many conditions you want in the form itself. Uh, you can have as many fields uh, and hide or show them or make them mandatory for solving or putting a ticket in a specific status, for example. Uh, last thing I do want to show you, we can add uh, conditions on any of the fields. So we can say if the fault explanation matches a specific text, we can say if the product name matches specific text, we can show if the return reason, for example, is too small, I want to show the product name field, for example. Um, for an, from an agent perspective, if we choose a, a showing field action, we can make it conditional never, we can make it always mandatory to submit, or we can make it mandatory to submit or enter if the ticket is being submitted in a specific state by the agent. So uh, I'm almost up to my 15 minute mark, which is the maximum attention range of anyone watching a video online. That is forms in a nutshell. Uh, the article to which this video will be attached will have some more documentation and uh, cool stuff for you to go through. Do yourself a favor. If you've paid for Zendesk, go and explore forms, use them. They are available on all the plans. Use them to your advantage so that you can report on them, so that you can have the information that you need to proceed with your query and tell everyone afterwards what 
happened. This is Dave from CX Experts.